Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm gonna grab my bike and go into the woods for some off-road action with the guys. Burn rubber, babe. Yeah. Uh, lucky, wait a second. Before you go, um, I want you to know that Nicholas is doing a lot better. That's good, Mom. So I'm really happy for you. Thanks. Come on. Come on. Nothing like beating a rap to make a Spencer feel better. It's nice to see he dropped the guilt trip. Finally realized it wasn't his fault that kid took a header. Yes. Doesn't exactly make it okay, though. What would you prefer? That he send the little bastard flowers? Starting a fight at the top of the stairs? That's not very smart. He found an intruder in our home standing inches away from our baby. He did the appropriate thing. His instincts have always been good. I will not start questioning my son's instincts. If he starts filtering his reflexes, he's a dead man. In this case, Nicholas was almost a dead man, Luke. And why? Come on, he wasn't going to hurt the baby. You don't know that. Yes, I do! Again, violence came into my home. I don't like it, Luke. I want to put a stop to it. Really? Well, allow me to point out that the last time my business brought violence into this home, you threw me out. It was different, Luke. Yeah, it was different because now the shoe is on the other foot. Now you are inviting in the danger. What? You, Laura! Now what are you going to do about it? This is just a boy. He's not a threat to us. This is incredible. He's standing in your blind spot. You refuse to even look around. He's hurt, Luke. He's, he's angry. That's why he lashes out. It's not because he's evil. That's what our instincts part company, baby. My gut screams otherwise. It could have just as easily been lucky laying at the bottom of those stairs. I know that. Is that what it's going to take for you to open your eyes? Every one of us is hurting for one reason or another because of that kid. Look what he's already done. He saved our daughter's life. And then he tried to get to know her a little better. Is that a crime? Or is it a plea to be treated like a human being? I thought that's what good old Uncle Stefan was for. He's the human nice one, isn't he? To hear you tell it, he's superhuman. He's like a saint. Here's a theory. Just a theory. Just a theory. The Cassidines abduct you. They hold you prisoner. They threaten your life. They threaten everyone you love. And at the same time, you depend on them for food, for shelter, for safety. For two years, you live like this. Two years. You succumb. You bond. But it's too scary to bond with monsters. So somehow, somehow you search until you find some speck of goodness in their twisted hearts. Especially when you have to leave your child behind. Stop it! Laura, it didn't work then, and it won't work now. It's time to damn the Cassidines and worry about the Spencers. You got a choice to make. Honey, it's either Nicholas or us. I don't like ultimatums. 
I don't like giving them. I'm sorry. Baby, there's real danger here. I'm circling the wagons. Are you in the circle or out? How can you ask me to turn my back on my own child? Can't I have both? No. I love you, Laura. More than my life, I would do anything for you. Anything that made sense, but this defies all logic. I mean, oof. How am I supposed to deal with the fact that Stefan has my wife's portrait hanging on his wall like a shrine? And that the son of Stavros Cassidyne is obsessed with my daughter? My God, Laura, they stole you from me. They violated you. Stop it, please. Stop it. And any time that kid gets the urge, he could tuck Lulu under his arm like a football and sprint for the nearest airfield, especially with you standing here holding the door open. Now, I am willing to let them live for your sake, but you've got to cut them off. You've got to. You've got to give them nothing in this town to hold on to so they'll go back to that crummy little island and leave our family in peace. That's the only way this can play out. Because you say so. Yes. Because I say so. I could probably suck the rest of this mess up somehow, but somebody has got to stand up and be responsible to my son. And right now, you can't do it, so the buck stops here. What do you mean? What, what's wrong? What's lucky? Do you see? This is exactly what I'm talking about. You have to ask. Laura, you've been so obsessed with this precious, tragic, Cassidyne past, you don't even see what's happening in this house. Have you taken a good look? at our son lately a really good look baby there's a mountain of hurt in his heart and i'm stopping it now i i don't understand at the hospital he's seen... if you need examples here's one of my favorites on lulu's birthday how do you think he felt as the two of us stood here looking through the screen door while your other offspring got all this fuss and attention for giving Lulu a Fabergé egg. In comparison, Lucky's puppet sort of paled. Don't you think? Especially when his mother was so distracted, she didn't even ask to see it. Darling, that's how it's been around here. You're moving through this house in some kind of cassidine induced trance. Your family is crashing and burning around you. Luke, if he was feeling like second best, why didn't you talk to me about it? I have talked to you, Laura. I've talked to you until I'm blue in the face. I've talked until I'm sick of hearing my voice. You don't hear. I'm through talking. This stops now. Unless you want another example, because I've got them stockpiled. No, I... No, I, I think I get your point. Oh, for God's sake. I really... thought that he was okay. I mean, I, I know that he's angry, but he seemed You thought like he was adjusting? You thought he was warming up to the idea? Uh-uh. I have been listening. Oh, my God. Maybe I have been oblivious. Clearly you think so. I suppose Lucky does, too. I'll go see him today. And? I'll tell him goodbye. When? The sooner the better, right?
Laura. What? This is no good unless you can make a conscious choice. Us or them. I'm going to do what you ask. And then I'll be back. Dear little sister, I don't know when or if I'll ever see you again. And I'm hoping someday your mother, our mother, will find this and let you read it. I think you must be the most beautiful baby in the world. I haven't known a lot of babies. to see you and know you and I wanted you to know me where I grew up I was always the baby I've seen pictures and movies, and you are more wonderful than any of those little girls. What I brought you. <laughs> You've already given us so much more than we can repay you for. <laughs> I think she wants the ribbon. You want that? It's nice, isn't it? Would you like to hold her while I open it? Look. Oh, look at that. There you go. It's okay. She's not made of glass. <laughs> smile when you see me and that makes me smile maybe if your mother reads this to you she'll also tell you that I helps that I helped you to live that's something that I'll always carry with me I wish 
that I could stick around and watch you grow. But your father told me, and he's right. I don't belong here. There's no place for me in your life. Okay, we're in a big closet. Very nice. This is the room where your father died. Really hungry. Yeah, I gotta fuel up, you know. The guys get here and we go bike and who knows when we'll stop. Dark, maybe. Are things all right at home? <sighs> Better. Well, you all hang together. We're trying. 